treasury of blessings and giver of life. Come and dwell within us and cleanse us from every blemish and save our souls, O blessed one. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace could will among men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace could will among men. O Lord, you shall open my lips. My mouth will show forth your praise. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace that comes from heaven above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. throughout the whole world for the welfare of the holy churches of God and for the union of them all let us pray to the Lord for this holy church and for those who enter it with faith devoutness and the fear of God let us pray to the Lord Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, let us pray to the Lord. For our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory, for our esteemed priesthood, for the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For the honorable government of our country and all civil authorities, and for our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. For this city and for every city, village and country, and for those who with faith dwell in them, let us pray to the Lord. For healthful seasons, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick, the suffering, and for those who are held in captivity, and for their safety and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed, and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you are due all glory, honor, and adoration to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. O Lord, our God, whose might is beyond description, whose grace surpasses all understanding, whose mercy is without limit, whose love for mankind is beyond expression. Master, in your presence, look down upon us in this holy church. Thank you. 
sickness, but the inner opening. Yours is the mind, and yours are the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of the ages. Amen. We are not permitted this community to pray together in harmony. We promise that you will grant the request of two or three gathered in your name. We pray for all the petitions of your servants that are beneficial to them, giving us in this world the knowledge of your truth and life eternal. God, a gracious and you love mankind, and to you we render glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. for you are 
from the epistle of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brethren, see, I write to you in my own large handwriting. Those who are trying to force you to be circumcised are making a play for human approval with an eye to escaping persecution for the cross of Christ. The very ones who accept circumcision do not follow the law themselves. They want you to be circumcised, only that they may boast about your bodily observance. May I never boast about anything but the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through it, the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. It means nothing whether one is circumcised or not. All that matters is that one is created anew. Peace and mercy on all who follow this rule of life and on the Israel of God. Henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear the brand marks of Jesus in my body. Brethren, may the favor of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit.
your spiritual life and understanding and acting all things according to your will. For the of our souls and bodies of Christ, God, and to you we give glory to you. Wisdom, let us be attentive as we listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. Gospel according to Saint Mark. Saint John. Saint John. Let us be attentive. The Lord said, No one has ascended into heaven, but he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And Moses. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. In our Orthodox tradition, on the day following a major event or a major feast day in the life of the church, we commemorate a person or a group of person, people who had taken part in the historic event. For example, the day after the nativity of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christmas, we commemorate the Virgin Mary. If you look on your church calendar, you will see that on January 8th or December 26th, it says Synaxis of the Virgin Mary, which means the gathering. So we come to church, Synaxis, Synaxis means gathering. So we come to church to honor the Virgin Mary's role in the birth of Jesus Christ. On the day after the Feast of the Annunciation, we commemorate the Archangel Gabriel. On the day following the baptism of our Lord, did you want to guess? St. John the Baptist. On the day following the meeting of our Lord in the temple, St. Simeon and the prophetess Anna. Yesterday, we celebrated the feast of the birth of the Theotokos, the birth of the Virgin Mary, and accordingly then, today, we commemorate those who took part in that role, Joachim and Anna, her parents. Joachim was a shepherd of his own flock. He owned his own flock. He didn't work for someone else. He owned his own flock. And he was, it was his sole occupation and it brought him much wealth. He often gave more than his share and asked that the abundance help those who could not afford to pay their share of the tax. Joachim also gave food and wool from his lambs and sheep to the less fortunate, giving one-third to the orphans, one-third to the widows, and one-third to the poor. At the age of 20, he took for his wife a woman named Anna, who was the daughter of Methan, the priest, from the tribe of Levi. They were married for 50 years and had no children. 
which in those days was a disgrace. They lived in disgrace. Many believe that if you had no children, you were cursed by God. Once a priest in the temple would not accept Joachim and Anna's offering, and they were driven out of the temple in sadness. Both Joachim and Anna were very pious, and they prayed for children, hoping that their offspring would see the Messiah. Nevertheless, they vowed that should the Lord give them a child, they would dedicate the child to the service of the Lord. One year, the very distraught Joachim was tending the flocks in the mountains. He prayed and fasted for many, many days. Then the archangel Gabriel appeared beside him, saying that his prayers and charitable deeds have been heard by God. The angel told him that God shuts up the womb so that he may, in a more wonderful manner, open it. The angel reminded Joachim of Sarah and Rachel, who both gave birth even though they were past the age. Accordingly, the angel said, your wife Anna will bring forth a daughter and you shall call her name Miriam or Mary. Go quickly, the angel said, and meet your wife at the golden gate in Jerusalem. This shall be your sign that what I say will come true. So Joachim gathered a tenth of his flock and made his way to the temple. Meanwhile, at the same time, the same angel, the archangel Gabriel, appeared to Anna, who was in the garden anxiously awaiting the return of her husband, who was away much longer than usual. And the angel spoke to her, saying that the Lord had heard her prayers as well. He told Anna to go to the Golden Gate in Jerusalem and meet your husband there. On the following day, Joachim brought his offerings into the temple, requesting that that one-tenth of everything that he had be shared with all of the people. And having worshipped the Lord, he and his wife went home. The next day, Anna conceived in her womb a child by Joachim's seed, and they awaited the divine promise in gladness. Nine months later, on September 21st or September 8th, according to the calendar, Anna gave birth to a baby girl whom they named Mary. In the verses of the Holy Day we read, Today the bonds of barrenness are loosed, for God hearkened to Joachim and Anna, and though it was beyond all hope, he clearly promised that they would bear a divine child from whom would be born the circumscribable himself who became mortal. A little sermon on the side here. We do not have the teaching of the Immaculate Conception of the Virgin Mary as they do in the Roman Church, which states that Mary was born without original sin. We believe that Mary, like us, was born just like us, just like all men. This doctrine of the Immaculate Conception was founded in the Roman Church in 1854, less than 200 years ago. But St. Ambrose, the father of one of our church, St. Ambrose of Milan, comments that, quote, of those born of women, not a single one not a single, is not a single one who is perfectly holy apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. So we believe that Mary was just like us. She endured and battled sinfulness, but was victorious over temptation and saved by Jesus Christ. Mary, therefore, is a perfect example of how we all should live our lives. Joachim and Anna fulfilled their promise to God and dedicated this young girl, Mary, to the service of God in the temple at the young age of three. Joachim died at the age of 80 and Anna was 79. And the pious couple are remembered as the righteous God-parent, God-grandparents of God. 
We honor them this day for their patience and piety for bringing forth the one, Virgin Mary, who would bring forth the eternal one, Jesus Christ, who would save all men. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say. O oh Lord, almighty God of our fathers, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. Patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and for our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory, for our spiritual fathers and all other clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ, for their welfare, peace, health, salvation, and for the remission of their sins, and that the Lord our God may prompt and help them in all things. Furthermore, we pray for those who give their offerings and do good works in this holy and venerable church for those who labor in its service, for those who sing, and for all the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy, for those who have shown us kindness, and for all Orthodox Christians. Merciful God who loves mankind, and we give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. Amen. But King of glory, no one is worthy to come to you to honor to your former service, but is bound down by desires of the first for the service of the
and who mystically represent the cherubim and the saint of the life giving trinity, the thrice holy him, let us not lay aside our earthly cares, that we may raise and hide the King of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic bulls. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim and the saint of the life giving trinity, the thrice holy him, let us not lay aside our earthly cares, that we may raise and hide the King of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic bulls. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the life represent the cherubim and the saint of the life giving trinity. That we may raise up high the King of all who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. God be merciful to me, the sinner. of God, those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, Julia Messner, Subdeacon Michael Alexa, Helen Koval, Tim Tiffany Magic, and for the, for the servants of God who are in need of our prayers, Father Lev Helawate, Kay Timko, and Beverly Tinkle, who are, who are preparing for procedures this week for their health and speedy recovery. For the servants of God, those who are joining us via the internet for their health and long life. For the departed servants of God, Dorothy Horval, Mary Horval, Mary Mirilovich, John Wells, Margaret Kuzmiak, Greg Kuzmiak, Michael Pish, the very Reverend Michael Conrad, Martha Lucas, Christine Olga Hatrovich, and John Shervenek, for their blessed repose and all you Orthodox Christians, always, now, and ever, and forever. And Lord God, remember your priesthood in this country. Is also to the the for us and for the transgressions of the our sacrifice will take place in the of grace was Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, gracious, and life giving Spirit. Now and ever and forever.
Let us stand aright, let us stand with fear, let us be attentive, so that we may offer the holy sacrifice in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. for this liturgy which you have found worthy to receive from our hands, even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six-winged and many-eyed, who soar aloft on their wings and who sing, uh, cry out, and uh, proclaim the triumphant hymn, saying... Blessed powers, O Lord, and love all mankind, we too cry out and say, Holy are you and all holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you and all holy, and sublime is your glory. You loved your world so much that you gave your only begotten Son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And after he had come and fulfilled everything in the divine plan for our redemption, on the night on which he was betrayed, or rather on the night on which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy, all pure and immaculate hands, and having given thanks, blessed, sanctified, and broken, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. All of you drink of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Remembering, therefore, the saving command and all that has been done for us the cross, the tomb, the resurrection, and the third day, the ascension of heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second and glorious coming and offering to you yours of your own in behalf of all and for all. Furthermore, we offer to you this spiritual and unbloody sacrifice, and we implore, pray, and beg of you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying here before us and make this bread the precious body of your Christ, and that which is in this cup the precious blood of your Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. That through those who partake of them, they may be for the purification of soul, for the remission of sins, for the communion in the Holy Spirit, for the full participation in the kingdom of heaven, for confidence in approaching you, and not for judgment nor condemnation. Furthermore, we offer to you this liturgical sacrifice to those who fall in the statement of faith, our corn fathers, fathers, patriarchs, our brothers, our brothers, 
especially for our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary. Remember among the first, O Lord, our holy ecumenical patriarch, Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory. Preserve them for your holy churches in peace, in safety, in honor, and in health for many years, so that they may faithfully dispense the word of your truth. grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honorable and sublime name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord for the precious gifts which have been offered and sanctified. Let us pray to the Lord that our God who loves mankind, having received him on his holy, most heavenly and mystical altar, as an aroma of spiritual fragrance may bestow upon us in return the divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray for our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want. Let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. For they that in all things will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us beseech the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. For the pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us beseech the Lord. For all that is good and profitable to our souls and for the peace of the world, let us beseech the Lord. the remainder of our life in peace and repentance, let us beseech the Lord. For a Christian ending of our life without pain and shame, peaceful and for a good account at the fearful judgment seat of Christ, let us beseech the Lord. Having prayed for the unity of faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Lord, with full confidence and without condemnation to dare to call upon you, God our Heavenly Father, and to say to you,
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. beneficial to each according to their need. Sail with those upon the seas, journey with those who travel by land and air, and cure the sick, O healer of our souls and bodies. Through the grace and bounties and love towards mankind of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, gracious, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and forever. Merciful to me, a sinner. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be attentive, O holy things are for the holy. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. I believe, O Lord, and confess that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant of your mystical supper, for I will not speak of this mystery to your enemies, nor like Judas will I give you a kiss, but like the penitent thief I confess to you, O oh Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O oh Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O oh Holy One, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let the partaking of your holy mysteries, O oh Lord, be not for my judgment nor condemnation, but for the healing of my soul and my body. O oh Lord, I also believe and confess that this which I am about to receive is truly your most precious body and truly your life-giving blood, which I pray I may worthily receive for the remission of all of my sins and for life everlasting. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me, for my sins are many. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forgive me if I have sinned against you in any way that you thought. Whether voluntary or involuntary, forgive me if I have sinned against you in any way that you thought. Whether voluntary or involuntary. The precious and all holy and all pure God, the Lord God, we see for Jesus. Praise the
blessing. Amen. The servant of God, Simeon. God and let your glory be over all the earth. Blessed is our God. Receive the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, uh, heavenly, life creating awesome mysteries of Christ. Arise, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O oh God, by your grace. Having prayed that this day will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory, to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Let us depart in peace. In the name of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who put their trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. 
Preserve the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine might, and forsake us not to put our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to your priests, to the honorable government of our country, to its armed forces, and to all your people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of light. You will give glory and thanksgiving and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. Birthday greetings are extended this week to Julie Messner. Welcome, to, welcome back. It's good to see you in church again, Julie. Uh, Subdeacon Michael Alexa, uh, happy birthday, Michael. Uh, Helen Koval, happy birthday. Tiffany Machek, she has her birthday on the strict fast day. She can't allow it's no cake. All those birthdays, no cake. That's okay. Your reward in heaven will be great. Coffee Social is sponsored this morning by Malora family. And teether on for the Feast of the Nativity of the Theotokos this morning. The Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross this Friday on Tiffany's birthday. It is a day of strict fasting. Divine Liturgy, 9 a.m. Vespers, Thursday evening at 6 p.m. We will hold our 10th annual Trivia Night Saturday, November 2nd, 2019 at our Christ the Savior Educational Center. A Trivia Night table has been set up in our Cathedral Auditorium where you may inquire where your talents may be put to use. Barbara Martiak is seeking donations for a money tree. Please see her today. Much to read in the bulletin. Pierogi sells Oktoberfests in the area. 2020 camping schedule. Please read the jottings for more details. Panahita this morning for Dorothy Horval, for Mary Horval, Mary Mirilovich, John Wells, Margaret Kuzmiak, Greg Kuzmiak, Michael Pish, Very Reverend Michael Conrad, Martha Lucas, Christine Olga Hatrovich, and John Chervenik. It's good to see you. I'll see you after Sunday school this morning. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you through his grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and forever. from the dead through the prayers of his most pure mother whose nativity we gloriously celebrate through the prayers of a holy father among the saints John Chrysostom Archbishop of Constantinople and through the prayers of Joachim and Anna the grandparents of our Lord Jesus Christ and through the prayers of all the saints have mercy on us and save us for he is gracious and he loves mankind Faithful servants gathered here this morning. Peace out and long life for many happy and blessed
Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. 